We got a huge bombshell revelation that's just come out that caught Liz Cheney and the J6 committee red-handed. We're going to see the latest on this breaking news and how it completely exonerates President Trump. And then... The message you are now sending is one of exclusion. is isn't equity, it's tyranny. You won't believe what a major city in California just required in order for residents to vote. Let's just say it's going to absolutely make your day. Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor, here to help you think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. If you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button, and let's dive right in. No man who would behave that way at that moment in time can ever serve in any position of authority in our nation again. He is unfit for any office. How ironic, because that's exactly what the voters in Wyoming thought of Liz Cheney when they booted her out of office. And now we know that they were absolutely justified in doing so. We got a major development in just how partisan and corrupt the J6 committee really was. It does appear that Liz Cheney and the J6 committee deliberately suppressed evidence in their weaving together the official J6 narrative. One of the unanswered mysteries surrounding that fateful day was, why on earth was the Capitol building so poorly prepared and defended on that day? Well, now we know. A newly released transcript of testimony confirms that President Trump did indeed request upwards of 10,000, again, 10,000 National Guard troops to maintain order and peace. That hardly sounds like someone hell-bent on disrupting and preventing Congress from certifying the election results. That would be quite the formidable force protecting and defending that congressional procedure. A transcript also puts to an end the absurd tale told by that far-left activist Cassidy Hutchinson, in testimony before the committee that Trump had physically tried to grab the steering wheel of the presidential limo when Secret Service refused to take him back to the Capitol. We now know that the J6 committee knew that Secret Service agents, including the driver of Trump's limo, they all denied that ridiculous fabrication. It's no wonder that Molly Hemingway of the Federalist came out and bluntly said it. Liz Cheney lied. She lied by both omission and commission, deliberately suppressing evidence that Trump did everything he actually could to make sure that the proceedings taking place inside the Capitol were protected, defended and secured. And she pushed that ridiculous testimony fabricated to make Trump look unhinged. Well, all of this means is that Trump has been completely and totally exonerated in all of this, completely and totally exonerated the charge that he attempted to disrupt the proceedings. If Cheney knew about this, which we have to assume she did, absolutely, then Molly Hemingway is absolutely right. She and the J6 committee lied. They blatantly lied to the American people. They knew President Trump took proactive steps to secure and protect the congressional proceedings to certify the election. That blatantly contradicts any assertion that he deliberately tried to disrupt that certification. But this bombshell revelation raises the obvious question. Why were those 10,000 National Guard troops rejected? Who did that? Why was Trump's offer turned down? So we, we end up where we started. Who made the decision to expose the Capitol as defenseless in such an irresponsible manner? And why didn't the J6 committee pursue that if they had evidence that such was the case? You see, this all just further underscores how pathetically partisan the J6 committee was. It really was the very definition of a kangaroo court. It was a committee that began with the verdict of Trump's guilt already assumed. Every single member had previously voted to impeach him. That was Pelosi's sole requirement for appointing a person to the committee. They began with Trump's guilt already predetermined. All they had to do was find the evidence to fit the crime that he had already been convicted of in the eyes of every single person sitting on that committee. Permanent Washington's legacy media did everything they possibly could to try to sell this committee to the American people. And now the truth is coming out, despite their best efforts at selling us this lie. More and more people realizing just how rankly partisan and corrupt the committee was. So what do you think? 
who ultimately was responsible for leaving the Capitol building, it appears intentionally defenseless. Let us know in the comment section below. <laughs> Gang, the hubris of these people is simply beyond words. And remember, we've experienced something very much like this. This channel, when it was recently demonetized, we had big tech overlords in effect trying to silence us and disrupt our relationship with one another. But you, literally thousands of you, stepped in and you rescued me in this channel by bypassing big tech and joining our Insiders Club. You made it loud and clear to the Silicon Valley oligarchs that we are a movement, an army of like-minded patriots who refuse to be silenced by the international woke police. And so, once again, I just want to take this moment to thank each and every one of you who've joined our Insiders Club for coming to our rescue. And for those of you who want to join in on the effort and take action, just click on that link below and join our email list. And that way you'll never, ever, ever worry about losing touch with me and with what we do here. Click on that link below, join our email list, and become a part of an army literally of hundreds of thousands of patriots dedicated to taking our nation back together. We've got to talk about what the city of Huntington Beach in California is doing. Voters went to the polls last Tuesday and overwhelmingly approved two ballots. The first involved implementing a voter ID requirement for all elections in Huntington Beach. The second involved banning the flying of the pride flag on city property. Yes, this is a California city, a city whose residents are obviously standing up and revolting against the far left wokeness that's taken over so much of the state. The voter ID requirement passed by eight points. The ban on the pride flag passed by double digits. Now, these two ballots flew a bit under the radar because they happened on the same day as Super Tuesday last week, the biggest day of the primary season. But that's when voters came out to vote on these two ballot measures as well, both of which passed overwhelmingly. Huntington Beach is becoming a solid conservative respite in the midst of the state's infesting wokeness. The Huntington Beach City Council originally proposed both ballots, so it's very clear that the city's residents are all on the same page with their local representatives. It's actually driving the woke left insane. For them, of course, there is no basis for legitimate dissent. They operate with what's called radical perspectivism, or some call it radical perspectivalism, which basically means that their perception of reality exhausts all possible options. There's no legitimate alternative to woke perceptions. Woke perceptions exhaust moral obligations, and so by definition, anything that opposes those obligations is inherently immoral. It's the single most undemocratic notion imaginable. All debate, all discussion, all deliberation shut down. You're not even allowed to be silent, right? Silence is compliance. So it's their way or the highway. And the residents of Huntington Beach appear as an oasis of sanity in an otherwise insane woke state.